Greetings and salutations, viewers. I'm Star Princess HLC, and welcome back to Lads in Distress. When we last left off, we started romancing the dashing Prince Snow, who has been basically exiled from his palace, and now we're kind of hiding out in his little shack here that he ended up having to scrape by to make for himself. So, I guess right now we're in his kitchen here. And I guess we're gonna make something, or he's gonna make us something? I'm not sure. My, my, it's a mystery how you can still be as breathtaking as ever, even straight out of bed. You are a true beauty. I roll my eyes and grab the cup of hot coffee on the counter, taking a long sip. Such blatantly false flattery. My hair most likely resembles a haystack, and I probably look like a ghoul. I don't know, I only see ever one side of you. I wish I could at least check my appearance before seeing him every morning. For some strange reason, though, I haven't been able to find a single mirror in the house. Hmm, that's interesting. It's too early in the morning for you t for your poetry snow. It's never too early to remind you what an exquisite creature you are. I try to hide my smile against the cup as I take another sip of coffee. I hate to admit it, but Snow is growing on me already. It's difficult not to like him when he's so charming and a gentleman at the same time. Although he can be over the top with his flirtations, he never fails to make me laugh, and he is never dull to be around. At least our marriage won't be boring. My mind flashes back to the comment he made about our marriage yesterday, and I find my cheeks heating up a tad. I immediately turn my face away hiding the blush. Thankfully, he doesn't notice, and he just goes on. I would love to discuss your beauty all day, but I actually have a question to ask you, my dear princess. I look at him with interest. He takes it as a cue to continue. There is a small village nearby where I work. It's nothing fancy, I'm afraid, but I was wondering if you'd like to go and have a look around. I perk up in excitement at his words and set down my cup of coffee immediately. I would love to. Can we leave now? He looks slightly taken aback by my eagerness. I... Well, I was actually thinking about taking you there tomorrow instead, since I need time to prepare a carriage for you. There is some distance between the village and my house, since, well, it costs less when the house is located in a less convenient location. Location, location, location. Forget the carriage. Let's head to the village now. Snow's lips curve upwards, and he gives a small bow. Your wish is my command, my princess. I look around with excitement, trying to drink in all the details I can. I can't believe I missed the chance to admire this stunning countryside view earlier on my way here because I fell asleep in the carriage. Wow, this is beautiful. Little town, it's a quiet village. Indeed it is, but still not as beautiful as you are. Oh, you flatter me, sir. I roll my eyes at him, holding back a smile and continue taking in the scenery with wide eyes. Underneath the clear blue sky, the green landscape stretches as far as my eyes could see. Frankly, it looks almost as if it came straight out of an oil painting and part of me wants to touch the grass beneath my shoes to make sure they are real. As beautiful as the scenery is, I can't help but be disappointed. Snow notices my frown and questions. Is something wrong, Charming? I shake my head frantically, trying to rephrase the question in my head to make it sound less rude. No, of course not. Your homeland is captivating. I just thought there would be more snow. I mean, this is Snow Kingdom after all. You want snow? Go outside where I am. There's plenty of snow. Ah, well, unfortunately, most of the snow has melted by now since it's nearing May. If we decide to spend winter here instead of here in your palace, you'd be able to see the view that Snow Kingdom is famous for. I envision a blanket of white snow on the surface of the landscape, and my eyes widen further in awe at the mental image. I immediately nod in agreement. That sounds perfect. We are definitely staying here this winter. For some strange reason, it just doesn't snow in Lunar Kingdom, so winter is a rather boring affair in my country. 
I see. You will enjoy living here, then. Well, you'll eventually get bored of it, too, but hey, it's always nice to see it the first time, right? He flashes me a quick smile as we keep on walking. Soon the village comes into sight. Snow points out the houses and buildings in the distance to me. There goes the baker with his tray, like always. The same old bread and rolls to sell. This is Frost Village. Nothing fancy, I'm afraid, but it's a quaint little village with very friendly and open villages. Well, villagers. It's a lovely place. I've been working in a tavern there for the past year. As soon as we pass the welcome sign at the entrance of the village, I immediately become aware of the people bustling around with an air of busy determination. I notice some villagers pausing to stare at us strangely, or rather eye my gown with a critical look, and I smooth the fabric self-consciously. Maybe I should have brought along some less flashy gowns with me after all, but in my defense I wasn't aware I wouldn't be staying in Snow's castle with him. Not far away, in front of a small house built of stone, there's a group of children playing, tossing a yarn at each other. Here, catch! Poof! At least it won't hurt when it hits you in the face. One of the children looks up as though feeling my gaze on them and peers at us curiously. Even from over here, I can see the excitement welling up inside the child. She hurries to her feet and starts rushing over to us. Are you a princess? Let me be your guide for the day, Charming. Is there anywhere where you would like to visit first? Uh, Snow? I point to the child that is spinning towards us. Snow barely has time to repair himself before the giggling child leaps into his arms, almost bowling him over. Aw. Who is this little girl? Could it be Snow's illegitimate daughter? Oh, that's quite a thing to think on first thing. Oh, this girl jumps into his arms and likes him. He must have a bastard child. Oh, heavens. This was not part of the deal. He failed to inform me he has a daughter. You don't know that to... Just assume, why don't you? Could be a relative. Could be a friend. Could be some other kid. I don't know. Why you gotta assume the worst? And even then, would it really be that terrible if he did have other kids? I cannot be a stepmother. I'm too nice to be an evil stepmother. You don't have to be an evil stepmother. Stepmothers are not inherently evil. Most of all, I'm too young to mother anyone. I can barely keep myself under control, let alone a young child. Girl, you're jumping to conclusions. Let's hear what the girl says first before you make that assumption that it's his kid. I almost flee from the scene in sheer panic, intent on finding Nicole and enlisting his help to escape back to Lunar Kingdom, when the child's babbling finally registers in my head. Snow, where have you been? I haven't seen you so long. Mommy and Daddy said you were busy with some princess. Did you forget us already? We miss you. Tommy isn't as good at playing hide and seek as you are. He always cheats too. Will you come play with us today, please? Mommy and Daddy? My racing heart slowly calms. I watch as Snow crouches down and strokes the little girl's head gently. Can I play with you another day, Talia? I have a dear friend with me today and I promise to show her around. The little girl's name immediately transform and transforms into a f or smile tra immediately transforms into a frown. She glares up at me and whines. Why? We want you to play with us now! Shut up! Snow, I don't mind if you spend some time with them. I'd be happy to explore the village myself. It's not like I can't take care of myself anyway. I mean, in one uh, timeline, I trained a dragon, so... Do you really not mind? She said she does it! Come on, let's go! Before I can react, the child has already dragged Snow away, moving towards her group of little friends. Snow looks back at me with an apologetic smile, mouthing an apology. Suddenly finding myself alone, I take a moment to watch him settle on the ground with the children, laughing good-naturedly as they pile on top of him in enthusiasm. A smile touches my lips. Well, who would have thought that the flirtatious, roguish prince, Snow, would have such patience and kindness for children? Hey, it just means he's going to be a good father someday, too. Turning away before Snow catches me staring, I decide to venture on the first path I see. I've been wandering around aimlessly, peeking into every shop I come across while waiting for Snow to catch up with me. 
Finally, I hear a familiar voice from behind me. Wait, Charming! I'm extremely sorry. The children let me wouldn't let me go no matter how hard I tried. They were tying me up and everything. I can't express how sorry I am for leaving you alone in a strange, unfamiliar village all by yourself. Snow, breathe. I really do not mind. In fact, it is rather reassuring to know that my future husband is so good with children. I expected a smirk or perhaps another sly remark from him. But instead, the look of inexplicable sorrow returns briefly to his eyes before his smiles it away. I love children. Talia's parents used to give me work when I first came here. I often watched her and her brothers while their parents were busy. That's how we became friends. Even though I work in the tavern now, Talia still invites me over to play with them sometimes. I have been too preoccupied lately to accept the invitation, so I suppose she was a tad overexcited when she ran into me just now. I must apologize again. Don't worry about it. It was probably even more enjoyable exploring this village myself without your chattering and ridiculous flirtations the entire time. I flash him a grin to let him know I'm teasing. He relaxes and seems to sigh with relief. You mean flirtations like this? A wink wink? My momentary confusion clears up when Snow suddenly presents a beautiful red rose in front of me with a flourish. Oh, so he's a tuxedo mask, is he? How? Where did you get that? For you, milady. Giggling and reluctantly charmed, I take the rose from him and sniff it delicately. Thank you. Let's see, your charisma must come in handy for diplomatic and political matters, or very popular with the ladies. I mean, to be fair, it probably is making it very popular with the ladies. Yeah, might as well ask that one. Uh, but I've never met, made such an effort to impress a lady before you. I would go to the ends of the earth for you, my dear princess. Snow bows exaggeratedly, and I laugh, sniffing in the sweet smell of the rose again. If that means I would finally receive a well-deserved break from your awfully cliché remarks, I would demand you do so. It's perfectly fine to admit that you are secretly flattered by my attention, Charming. Never. We stand there for a moment, just smiling at each other in amusement. It might just be my imagination, but there's a touch more genuineness in Snow's coy smile this time. Eventually, Snow breaks the silence. It's almost past noon. Would you be so kind as to let me treat you to a meal as an apology for abandoning you? Hmm... That is an enormous sacrifice on my part, but I suppose I can make this concession. I thank you for this great honor, milady. Come, I'll lead the way. Before I could protest, Snow lightly grabs my hand and starts steering us towards the tavern. Blushing and feeling strangely flustered, I open my mouth to question him, but my words die in my throat when Snow squeezes my hand gently and whispers in an almost intimate manner. I will make it up to you. I promise. Hmm. Groaning from the effort, I finally managed to pry my eyes open as I reach for the kettle of coffee. Thank heavens for coffee. As the hot liquid makes its way slowly down to my stomach, my alertness gradually comes back to me, and with that, I finally become aware of the sound of whispering in the other room. It sounds like a tense argument albeit in deliberately low voices so that I can't make out any words even when I try to listen intently. Who's arguing already at such an ungodly hour? Two of the guards? Is that what woke me so early today? It's probably Snow and, I don't know, maybe Nicole? Feeling my anger flare up, I set down my cup and marched my way to the door, determined to give the guards a stern talking. Do you know what time... Stopping dead in my tracks, I choke on my words as I hear a distinctly female voice raise in volume and then Snow's gentle whispering. A woman? I wasn't aware there were any other females in this house. In the last week I've stayed here, there were never any female visitors either. Did he bring home a lover last night? Is the bastard cheating on me? A strange feeling washes over me. I should have expected this behavior from him, 
so this should have come as a no surprise at all. Yet I find myself disappointed and oddly upset, not merely offended at his disrespectful behavior. It's the same inexplicable feeling that drives me to push the door slightly open so I can peek out at the mysterious woman arguing with Snow. To my frustration, Snow is blocking her from my sight, so that all I can see is just wavy blonde hair and an arm waving wildly at him as he, she spoke. Damn it, move aside, Snow! I want to see this mistress! If it is in fact a mistress, I'm starting to wonder. I'm not going to just automatically assume the guy's cheating on me, but who knows. I mumble under my breath, trying to discreetly adjust my angle of vision so I can satisfy my curiosity. The woman unexpectedly raises her voice again, sounding suspiciously close to tears, and I can't help but overhear their conversation. How could you? How could you avoid me like this after all the nights we spent together? Did they mean nothing to you? Nothing at all? Wait a minute. Is that? No. You know it's not like that. I'm sorry, Snowflake. I genuinely am. I never meant to hurt you. Please just leave. I thought it made it clear when I ended things with you weeks ago that that would be the last time we ever met. Is this because of the princess you've been chasing after? Listen, Snow, please, forget the marriage alliance. You don't need some princess to make your dreams come true. I can. You know my husband left me more money than I could spend in a lifetime? I can give you anything you want, whether it's jewels or fine clothing or the best wine in all the land. Just come home with me. I was definitely right. This is one of Snow's lovers. Or rather, judging from their conversation, one of his past lovers. And her name apparently is Snowflake. That's... I shake my head half in disbelief, half in amusement. He really is as much of a heartbreaker as the rumors say. Part of me considers stepping out of my hiding place, hoping that my presence would chase, help him chase the girl away. Part of me wants to watch this whole scene unfold. My decision is made for me when Snow replies in a much louder voice than before, his tone cold as ice. Appropriate. I'm sorry. If I ever misled you about my feelings and intentions, I deeply apologize. But it doesn't change my mind about this. Perhaps once upon a time, I would have been tempted by your offer. But not anymore. I appreciate your generosity. But what I want is one thing you can never give me. Please, just leave before Charming wakes up. I don't want her to have the wrong idea about me. I need this. I beg you, don't ruin this one and only chance I have. She whispers something too softly for me to make out, but I'm no longer interested in their conversation. My mind is still trying to process all that I've overheard just now. What was the one thing he wanted? Why was he so vague about it? What exactly is Snow hoping to get out of our alliance? He did say getting back his rightful crown was merely one of his reasons. I thought it would be the biggest one, but from what I gather it seems more like an afterthought. There is something important he is hiding from me. Yeah, that. A frustrated sigh snaps me out of my gaze. Peeking around the ajar door, I notice that Snow has finally persuaded Snowflake to leave. He slumped over in the chair, his head in both his hands. His usual carefree, frivolous demeanor has disappeared into thin air, leaving behind a man who frankly just looks exhausted, with the weight of the world on his shoulders. My suspicion dissipates for the time being, my heart clenching at the sight. Before I can change my mind, I call out to him. Good morning, Snow. He looks up with a start, and a genuine smile lights up his face. Good morning, Charming. Did you sleep well? I shrug in response. Snow's eyes narrow, gauging my expression, and he gives another resigned sigh. How much did you hear? Surprised by the sudden question, I stutter as I try to decide whether I should admit I have been eavesdropping on them and confess what I heard. I'm gonna be honest. It's If we're gonna get married, we might as well be honest with each other. Most of it, I think. I believe her knocking or your conversation was what woke me up. There's a moment of silence as Snow processes my words. Finally, he gives me a gentle, apologetic smile. I'm sorry you had to hear that. Thank you for your honesty. I really appreciate that you were upfront about overhearing our conversation. Relieved that Snow doesn't seem to be angry at my eavesdropping, I move to sit beside him. 
I'm sorry. It was not my intention to listen in on your private conversation. No, I should be the one apologizing. I realize how unpleasant this is, considering this is our courting period. I assure you, this will never happen again. I will make sure that Snowflake and I are both on the same page about the end of our relations. Thank you. That's a considered offer, but you don't have to go to such lengths. You can put this matter out of your mind, just like I already have. You are very kind, Princess. Well, I appreciate you have broken off your affairs before courting me, and I also appreciate the efforts you took to take care of the situation. I have nothing to complain about. I know most girls would be most displeased about all this. I must say, I'm very relieved you are not angry with me about my less than attractive history with women. Still, I cannot risk losing my chance at winning your heart. I will do everything I can to make sure what happened today will not repeat in the future. At this opening, I immediately grasped the opportunity to ask for more information. Can I ask you a question? Please do. What are your reasons for marrying me? Why do you have such a great desire to be married to me in particular? I don't believe that it is as simple as the fact that you have to fulfill your father's condition to return home. Otherwise, I'm sure there are many other princesses or wealthy nobles who would have married you eagerly ages ago. Like, you know, Snowflake. He gives me a thoughtful smile. Yes, you're right. I need you, you specifically and no one else, because of your magic. Taken aback by his blunt answer, I repeat dumbly. My magic? Why? I'm not allowed to teach you magic even if you marry me. You know that, right? Outsiders aren't allowed to be taught magic. Heavens, even half of the lower nobles don't have an ounce of magical ability because they could not afford lessons. After all, it is extremely expensive to afford a fairy tutor. No, no, I'm not seeking to learn your magic. I need help undoing a bit of magic. Oh, you got a curse too, don't you? What? How is that possible? You should never have even come across any magic in your life at all. We have worked hard at keeping magic a secret among ourselves in Lunar Kingdom. My stepmother was previously part of the aristocracy in your kingdom. Ah. Uh, my jaw drops at the implication of his words. You mean your stepmother cast a spell that you seek to undo? Yes. I racked my brain trying to remember if any notable witches of royal bloodlines in my kingdom had left our kingdom for marriage, but I can't recall any such instance. Curse that old fool of a teacher. I can't believe he neglected to mention this in our lessons. And Nicole, too. How could he not tell me about this? I'm sure he must have heard it somewhere. He loves keeping up with the latest gossip in court. Speaking of Nicole, why not just go to one of the fairies in Lunar Kingdom for help? Why go to all this trouble of marrying me. I have tried seeking help from other magic practicers. Unfortunately, I believe the only one powerful enough in this land to accomplish what I require is you. Despite my disbelief, I can't help but preen a little at the compliment. Yes, I am pretty powerful, aren't I? Aren't I just the charmingest of charmings? I see, but still doesn't quite explain why a marriage is necessary. I would gladly offer my assistance if you had just sent me a letter. This is the best way. I need to marry you because the caster of the spell, my stepmother, resides inside the royal palace and never steps foot outside. You must both be allowed to stay in the palace for some time to be able to investigate her and look into this problem. Even if I had chosen to marry a different noble to fulfill my father's condition so I would be allowed to return to the palace, and invite you to stay for diplomatic matters, you would not be allowed to stay long before rousing suspicion, which is the last thing we want. Therefore, my only solution is to marry you to give us both a reason to live in the palace for an extended period of time, so that way we can find a way to undo my stepmother's magic. Moreover, I have heard that you are also in desperate need of a marriage to a prince. The truth is, my stepmother is controlling most of the power in the kingdom right now, taking advantage of my father's weak state. I am uncertain if she will ever let me even breathe in the direction of the palace as long as she lives. If you help me undo my stepmother's curse and expose her for the witch she is, she will lose her power and can no longer stop my father from reinstating me as crown prince. I will be allowed to take my rightful crown and title back. When I am coron 
Coronated as king, our nations can be allied just as you wished. We can kill two burns with one stone with this marriage, if you decide to help me. I... I don't quite know how to respond to that. It's clear Snow has put a lot of thought into this plan before. I apologize. I really should have told you about this before I started courting you. However, I was wary of trusting someone I barely know with this important secret of mine, so I decided to wait. I hope you'll understand and forgive my withholding of information. If it is too much for you, I understand if you wanted to bring our relationship to an end, I would not hold it against you. Snow's head is bowed low, looking humbled. Still trying to process the information, I hold my finger to let him know I need a minute to think. I suppose I should be angry that Snow kept such a huge secret from me, especially when it invoked me in a situation that I or involved me in a situation that I did not sign up for. Yet I can see where he is coming from. This certainly is no simple matter. Accusing a queen of witchcraft in kingdoms outside of Lunar Kingdom is equal to treason. Part of me is secretly happy that Snow has trusted me with this, although we have only known each other for a short period of time. The question now is, should I help him or not? I must ask, what kind of spell is it? I'm not certain, but I believe it may be a curse. A dark curse. So, did everybody end up in a little town called Storybrook with all of their memories wiped? Just saying. Heavens. I try and fail to suppress the leap of excitement inside the idea of a curse. How exciting. Snow eyes the eager look of interest on my face with a hint of confusion and amusement. I see that you may need more details before you make an informed decision. I nod enthusiastically, though my mind has already been made up. As if I could ever turn down the chance of being the one to break a dark curse. And without Rumpelstiltskin to help us. Well, to be more precise, it is a curse of death on my lips. Excuse me? I certainly was not expecting that. How should I explain this? If you kiss someone, you die? My stepmother kindly informed me about the efforts of the curse while gloating about what she has done. My lips are cursed. The first kiss numbs the person's heart to feelings. The second makes the person forget. And the third kills them. What? I would have burst off laughing if it weren't for the serious expression on Snow's face. That is... a ridiculous curse. The idea is ludicrous. I've never heard of anything like it. Like, honestly, it would be just easier just to be kissed dead rather than kiss, oh, you can't feel anything, kiss, you forget everything, kiss dead. I'm just saying, you could have done it in one step. Impossible, he must be mistaken. Most unusual. I finished my sentence politely. I assure you I am not jesting. That is the effect of the curse. My previous lovers all knew that they could not kiss me on the lips, though they did not know why. I find it difficult to wrap my mind around such a curse, but the reappearance of that glint of hollow sadness in his eyes convinces me. Suddenly, I understand the brief flashes of loneliness and deep sorrow in the depths of his eyes, and even his flirtatious, frivolous attitude. How difficult it must have been to live with the burden of such a curse, to let the heavy secret weigh down on his soul, yet never speak a word to another for fear of being burned at the stake to maintain a careful distance from even his most intimate lovers. I mean, to be fair, you don't necessarily need to kiss somebody, at least on the lips. And certainly it didn't probably stop him from having sex, I'm just saying. There's an odd feeling in my chest as I try to imagine being in his shoes. Originally I chose him out of my unusual sense of responsibility to help the ones who can't help themselves to do what no one else can. Yet, now somehow without my noticing, my reason has slowly changed. In the last week, I have generally come to respect and enjoy being with Prince Snow. I, wanted to help, I want to help him, because he is my friend. I want to restore the usual bright smile on his face. Alright, I will do everything in my power to help, me, help you. You have my word. In fact, I will marry you right now. What? His jaw slackens, and if it weren't for the severity of this moment, I would have laughed out loud at his expression of shock. You can get married now if you wish, so we can head to your palace immediately and begin our investigation. I... 
bed? Snow looks uncharacteristically flustered and seems to increase with every second. I... no. No? I mean, yes, I, I'm extremely desperate to break the curse. As you know, I would also love to marry you. You know, I have no idea how happy it makes me to hear this. But no, not like this. Not like this! What do you mean? Why not? I... Uh, just let me have this month to court you, just like our tradition dictates. Please, if you still wish to marry me by the end of the month, we can get married immediately, but not any sooner than that. I shake my head at him, baffled. Shouldn't he be jumping for joy at the fact that I'm willing to skip ahead to the marriage part? I know he must be in a hurry to return home. I can see the desperation and tension written all over his face. I don't expect I didn't expect you to be one for tradition. Snow chuckles weakly as he brings my hand up to his mouth and presses a kiss on the back of my hand. I'm usually not, but it seems like when it comes to you, I don't quite act like myself anymore. Caught off guard, I can't hide the blush that covers my cheeks and mumble quietly. I still don't quite understand why you want to delay our wedding. Don't misunderstand me. I appreciate what you offer, truly, but I can't accept yet. You should at least spend a month with me during our courting period to decide if you can stand me or not. After all, you have to spend the rest of your life with me if you marry me. I mean, he's got a point. It's like, you really shouldn't rush into these kind of things, even if there's a curse on the, on the horizon or on the current time. I care about you. I know you have a great desire to help people, but I don't want you stuck in a miserable marriage just because of a momentary urge to help this poor lad. Snow is gazing at me with such an uncharacteristic gentleness that I find myself giving in. Fine. Whenever you change your mind, let me know. My offer still stands. Snow takes my hand and presses a kiss to my back to the back. Thank you, Princess Charming. You really are an angel sent from the heavens. I try. All right. Well, I guess now we continue on to the next part of this story and actually get to maybe figure out more about this curse or anything else related to it in the next video because so far this is definitely getting interesting but for now this is star princess hlc saying thank you very much for watching and have a fond farewell mm -hmm.